Hi everyone, I hope you're having a good evening. Today, you know, it's almost close to Friday, so I thought I'm gonna do a relatively easy question uh, with a little bit of a twist. Uh, when I say twist, I mean, you know, use some cheeky ways to solve this particular problem. Um, just to show some other additional functions that might be useful for you uh, during your interviews if you wanna solve it. So you don't have to write through these long iterators. Um, so yeah, the question we're gonna be working on today is called uh, reverse integers. Um, the key part of this question is um, given 32 bit sign integer, reverse digits of an integer. Don't let this 32 bit integer thing scare you. All it really means is that you basically have a lower bound and upper bound number um, that you can play with or you have to reverse. Otherwise, if it exceeds those, um, you have to return a zero over here because we have a very key note here. Assuming we are dealing with an environment which could only store integers within a 32-bit signed integer range between negative 2 to the power of 31 is our lower bound, and our upper bound will be 2 to the power of 31 minus 1 will be our upper bound. For the purpose of this problem, assume that your function returns 0 uh, when the reverse integer overflows. So we're not going to dive too deep about explaining about overflow and all that stuff. All we need to be worried about is that is our, the number we're dealing with going to be uh, less than 2 to the power of 31 or greater than 2 to the power of 31 minus 1. So those are like our upper and lower bounds. Um, so let's look at some examples to see what this question is all about. Um, so given a number, we're not giving a string, we're giving a number, um, 1, 2, 3, you know, pretty self-explanatory. To reverse it, it's pretty much 3, 2, 1. Uh, for negative numbers, that's the case number two, um, we still have to essentially retain the negative value even after we reverse it. Uh, the third case here is to pretty much, uh, if you get something at 120, 0, you're not going to return 0 to 1. You're going to return pretty much 21 and drop to 0. So those are like our three cases we have to think about. Um, so let's, let's give a minute to think how we're going to solve this. Now, one way you can solve it is actually to iterate through all this stuff, um, but we're going to try a, more, a little bit more fun way to solve this. Um, so I'm going to try, I'm going to type something and we'll follow along and I'll explain it afterwards. So the first thing I want to do here is to check whether or not it's, we're playing with a positive number or a negative number. Um, and if it's a negative number, well, we could theoretically use the same thing um, as what we do with the positive number, but um, change the result of that whatever returns from that positive number but just add a negative to it so we can do that simply by writing a quick statement saying if my x is less than zero so meaning that's a negative number I'm gonna return the negative one times whatever the solution I get from uh, calling myself which is reverse and I'm gonna pass in the negative of the x so what does this do? It pretty much passes the positive version of this into the function. Um, and whatever that result comes out when we reverse this, just apply the negative one to it. Um, since I like ES6, I'm gonna convert this to ES6 as well. Go in here. Bam, great. Okay, cool. So like I said, uh, what it does in this case, negative one, two, three, when you pass it in here, it's gonna become one, two, three. So um, if it's a negative number, return the negative version of calling it yourself. So in this case, it'll be, uh, I'm putting one, two, three here. I'm gonna put it back here. It's gonna be one, two, three. And, it's, and when it's one, two, three, it'll skip this condition, right? And it'll go to the actual, how we um, solve this problem. So I'm gonna make a variable here, const, uh, call it a solution, right? What we wanna do here, um, let's think what kind of things, what kind of tools are available to us. now. Since this is a number, uh, if we maintain its status as a number, it's going to be, you know, a little bit more cumbersome, more code to solve it. But I'm going to try trying to be a little bit cheeky and convert this number into a string. Now, there's a way to do this in a short form, which is um, I can just go x plus uh, an empty string. So what this pretty much does is pretty convert the number into a string uh, when you're merging it together. And then when, when if we're looking at this and it's a string, what are the things we can do? Uh, some of the things we can do is actually start splitting this particular element. So I want to split split it. So what it does is pretty much it splits um, the 1, 2, 3 into like 1, 2, 3. Um, and then afterwards, we have, can have as an array, uh, we can actually just reverse. There's a native feature. Reverse. Reverse it. 
And then uh, once you reverse it, you just simply join it together on the empty blanks. And pretty much that will provide a solution for the positive condition. But this is not, we're not done here yet. Uh, there's one case, remember, that we have to consider is that if it's greater than 2 to the power of 31, we need to return a 0. So let's check if the solution is greater than that. So if the, uh, let's try playing with this. Uh, I'm going to use ternary function. So if the solution is greater than uh, 2 times 31 minus 1, right? If it's greater than that, uh, then I'm just going to return the 0. Otherwise, I'm going to return the solution. Cool. So what this really does, um, if we go down here and analyze it more, um, on the case of 1, 2, 3, we're going to put x will be 1, 2, 3. It's not going to fall in this condition because it's a positive number. Uh, what's going to happen over here is that x, 1, 2, 3 is going to be converted into a string. And then we're going to split it. So it's going to be pretty much a 1, 2, 3. Right, and then we're going to reverse it, which is going to be three, two, one, and then when we join, it's pretty much going to be like three, two, one, um, to give me my solution on this particular element, um, and then we convert it, or we check the condition, see if it's a greater than thirty-two bit. If it's greater than, then you're going to return a zero. Otherwise, you return the solution, and if all things go well, this should be the solution. Let's run it. And I get an undefined because, ah, do you guys know why I'm getting undefined? Think about it. I'm actually, I didn't return my actual statement. Now, that should be cool. Cool, I solved it. Ooh, this is horrible. But when you're playing with leak code, by the way, don't get too caught up with the run times. Um, sometimes uh, with for the same code, uh, I heard, I wrote a similar function. Sometimes it's it you could vary the ranges can be like you be 99% or it can be 60%. It really depends on what time you submit the code and how much traffic it is. So don't get too caught up with it. But as long as you understand the time complexity of things, then you should be fine. But yeah, pretty much we solved the problem here. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask me. Otherwise, uh, we'll wait for the next uh, next episode. This was a fast one. See ya.